All right, so given equation of line that's perpendicular to line H. Well, line H, so we have to find the slope. To find the slope, we take two points, any two points that are clearly labeled and find the slope between them. So the slope is the rise. So I'm rising three and I'm running one, right? So the slope is three over one. Well, that's the slope of line H. That's the slope of line H. So if it's perpendicular, do you remember what the slope would have to be? Uh, the negative reciprocal. That's right. So the slope of our, of our line is gonna be negative one third. Mm -hmm. And we also, um, it says give an equation, an equation of a line. It says an equation because it can be anything. Mm -hmm. We could choose any point. So we're gonna choose the point, I don't know, this point right here, the point negative one, zero. Mm -hmm. So if I have that equation or that point and, and this slope, remember point slope form, you take y minus y sub one equals the slope times x minus x sub one. So that would just be y equals negative one third times x plus one. And you could leave it like that, or you could distribute the negative one third, but it didn't ask you for any particular equation form. Oh, okay. Oh, cause, cause, okay. Yeah, that did answer my question. Now you could have chosen a different point as well if you wanted to. You could have chosen the point <clears throat> zero comma three, and then your equation would be y minus three equals negative one third times x minus zero, and that's going to give you the exact same answer. If you to put if you were to put these in slope intercept form, this equation would be y equals negative one third x plus three. See how I did that in this equation. Mm -hmm. But um, on the answer, key, so hold on, sorry, but, I made a mistake. Something doesn't seem right about that. Where oh yeah, no, those are two different lines altogether. Yeah, sorry. That this this line is this red line right here, right, and the blue one is this line right here. So they're not the same line. Oops, let me draw that in. Those are the two lines that I have done. Okay, now, did that answer your question? What was your question again? My question was, so I figured out the slope, but my question was like on the answer key, it, it put it in um, point, like uh, slope intercept form. And on yeah. the answer, it said the answer was um, y equals negative one third x minus two. So I just wanted to know where, where the negative two came from. So they must have chosen a different point. They must have, or a, a different, they must have chosen this one that went through right here. They're just using a different point, right? So they're using the point that went through there for oh. some reason. I don't know why. Okay. I'm not sure what. So even if I got, I did get it. I, I got an answer similar to like the one in the red. So yeah, I, okay, okay. I think that- So, I the, think so the, the key here is that there are more, there's more than one equation that would, that would be true because there's a lot of per, there's a lot of lines that are parallel or perpendicular rather mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. there's a lot of lines all of those lines you could have used any one of those so yours is yours is right if it's like this so so to, to simplify the red one it would be y equals negative one third x minus one third is that what you got yes that's what i got yeah that's perfect okay. Okay, it's just I just I just got concerned for a minute. I didn't know that there were like many different um, points I could choose from. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, okay. because That's remember good. the qu it said given an equation of a line, there's not only one, right? There's a lot of lines that are perpendicular to the line right. eight. Mm -hmm. So you could you could pick any line as long as you know a point on it. So they just picked a point. In fact, they just took. To be honest with you. Um, they they just took any point altogether. They they actually just chose the point that it goes through to be negative okay. negative two. That's mm -hmm. what they did. Okay. So they you could literally this could be whatever you want it to be. You could pick anything for your y intercept because that all of the lines that have the slope of negative one third, all of those mm -hmm. lines, as long as the as long as your m is negative one third. 
it, it's going to work. Oh, that makes so much more sense. Okay, thank you. So which number do you want to see? Number 19. 19, okay. It says, what is the distance from R to Q shown in the figure? So we're trying to go from R, right, which is right here, to Q. That's line Q. So we're going to this point right here. So notice that point is one, two, three, four, negative four, comma, one, two, negative two. So that's, that's the point that I'm going to. Now, how do I know that that's what it means? Well, distance is, distance means it's the shortest distance between two points. And the shortest distance wouldn't be here or here or here. It would be a 90 degree angle right there. So that's the shortest distance. So this value, that point is negative four comma negative two. And R, that, that point is what? Negative one comma one? Is that right? So the uh, distance formula, so um, the distance formula says that you take the square, the distance between two points is the square root of the squares plus the squares of the x's and the y's. So I'm gonna put an x in here, negative four minus a negative one, be careful with signs. Got it, see what I did there? And then I'm gonna put the y's in here, negative two minus one. Got it, see how I did that? That's called the distance formula. Distance formula. Okay, now the, another way to think about that is I'm taking, basically what I'm doing is I'm taking this triangle right here. And that triangle, in that triangle, this is, um, I'll color code this for you. This yellow distance right here is this distance right here. You follow? And the blue distance right here is this distance right there. So what is negative two minus one? It's negative three. That's the distance, the blue distance right there is, is negative three. Now notice it's a negative three, but what happens when I square it? What happens to the negative? Positive. It becomes a positive, that's right. So it didn't really matter that it was a negative. That's just a distance. And then look at the red, at, at the sorry, the yellow. What's the distance of that yellow? The distance of that is four, negative four plus one, which is negative three. So negative three squared is also nine. So this distance is also three. And now all I'm really using is Pythagorean's theorem, right? What's Pythagorean's theorem say? It says take this distance squared plus this distance squared equals this distance squared. So if I wanna find the distance of that hypotenuse right there, that red hypotenuse that I'm drawing in, the distance of that would be the square root of that, that squared plus that squared. In other words, I'm using the Pythagorean theorem. So the distance formula is really just Pythagorean's theorem in a disguise. That's all it is. So what's my answer? My answer is the square root of 80 of 18, excuse me, not 81, the square root of 18. And I can simplify that. 18 is two times nine, right? So it's really three square roots of two. So the answer is C. How did I get three square roots of two? Well, because 18, the square root of 18 equals the square root of two times the square root of nine. And the square root of nine is just three. So I put that three in front and I leave the square, the two inside the square root. That's how I simplify. Got it? And this problem says a group of students start a music club at their school at the club's first meeting, five members sign up, 12 days later, the club has a total of 23 members. If membership increased at the same rate, how many members, meaning the same rate every day is what they mean, a linear rate. How many members are in the club 30 days after its first meeting? Oh, actually, 
the same rate. Yeah, the same rate means it's linear. So what I'm really doing is I've got two points here. At the club's first meeting, five members signed up. So at meeting one, we had five members. You follow how I came up with that point? Yep. 12 days later, 12 days later. Okay, so I'm sorry. At the first meeting, this is a little bit tricky. The first meeting would actually be zero days. I think that's what I want to say. So at time zero, there were five members. 12 days later, so now we're at 12. 12, there were 23 members. So those are my two points. If I think of these points on a Cartesian plane, I've got the green point here. Here's zero comma five. And then the red point is 12 comma 23. And they're saying that the membership increases at the same rate. The same rate means that what they're getting at here is it's linear. So we want to find out how many there are 30 days after the first meeting. So this is 23 in red. We want to know what 30 is right here. We want to know what that point's going to be right there. Got it? So this was a little tricky because you had to you had to figure out that this is five comma zero or zero comma five. You didn't have to do that, but 12 days later would have been this day would have been 13, not 12. If it was 12 days after day one, then the day would be 13. It would still work, but it would it, it, it's it's just harder to do it that way. It's easier. Do you know why it's easier if you use the point zero comma five? Can someone tell me? You can plug the y intercept in much faster. Exactly, because that means this is your y intercept. This is your b. So all I have to find is my m. And remember, I find m by taking the rise. The rise is this distance. So that's 23 minus 5. 23 minus 5 is the rise over the run. And the run is this distance, which is 12 minus 0. Got it? So that would be what, 18 over 12, which reduces those both have a three, or I'm sorry, a six. So that's three over two. So your slope is three over two. So ready, y equals m x, three over two, x plus b. And now how do I find how many members there were 30 days after the meeting? What equals 30? For X. That's right. X equals 30. X equals 30. And I solve for Y. 30. Now, by the way, let me teach you a little trick here. A lot of people will just go ahead and multiply 30 times three halves. Just simplify it first. 30 divided by two is 15. Right? And now 15 times three is 45. You didn't need a calculator for that. So your answer is 50, 50 members. Got it?